Once all the content creation process is over, it's time to publish your content. But before that, you have to make sure that the settings is as you want. So to access uh, publishing settings, you have to go to file right over here and then you have to go to publish settings right over here. And once you go to publish settings, a dialog box will open up which says publish settings. So it is the same as going into preferences and then going to project and publish settings right over here. So here you can see that there are a series of options which you may want to enable or disable. So you can see right here at the top, it says frame per second is 30. So frame per second is like a series of images displayed per second, which makes the movement smooth, smooth or uh, jerky right over here. So if you have many, much more animations, you may want to keep that higher like 60 so that it is very, very smooth for your eyes. But if you want like, uh, like you you don't have much animations then you can go as low as 10 or even 5 right over there uh, but that is not very good for animations but again frames per second does affect your file size as well so the more uh, frames there is the more file size there is uh, right over there so you got to see that as well and it takes more processing power of the end users system as well. So let me just leave that around to 50 in my case. Then we have language right over here as you can see. So you can choose the language of your choice. I'm just going to leave mine to English US right over there. If you plan to use your uh, uh, project with Adobe Connect, then you can also publish the Adobe Connect metadata right over there. And then uh, you have an option to include mouse. So that means that whenever uh, you use let's say for example um, any uh, interactive slides you do want to include the slide uh, include include the mouse that is you do want them to see the mouse on the screen unless you're actually making an automatic slide where there's just narration and contents moving on uh, you do want to enable accessibility feature as well so that there's various ways to interact with the content and it's easier for different type of people uh, to use the content as well. You can also restrict the keyboard tapping to slide items only as well or just leave it as it is so you can restrict keyboard tapping itself as well. So there's something you can do. You can hide selection rectangle for slide items in HTML5. So if you plan to uh, publish this in HTML5 and so you want to hide the selection rectangles which are usually displayed in HTML5, then you can choose this out as well. You can completely disable the audio right here or include the audio right over there. And you want to uh, publish the audio as mono, then you click this up. It really does save uh, uh, file size, but makes the experience a bit less uh, like 3D, like stereoscopic. So if you were to turn this off, then the audio is exported as a stereo audio. So there's more richer audio experience for the end user. So I usually like to keep this off uh, because it gives the uh, end user a bit more of a dynamic feel to the lesson they're learning. Then they have play tap audio for recorded typing. So if there's the typing going on, then um, typing sounds is played out. If you don't want that, then you simply disable this out right over here. Uh, so uh, the lesson is actually uh, is actually orientable. That means you can view it in any angle. So if the uh, viewer uh, like rotates their phone, and then it'll the the lesson will rotate out. Uh, and they'll be able to see it in landscape, um, landscape or portrait view of their choice. But if you don't want to allow that, then disallow phone to uh, landscape orientation, then you can actually do this. The course is only best viewed in portrait and so forth. So now they cannot see the content in uh, landscape mode at all if you do this. But usually I like to turn that off because I don't see the reason why the, it should be on uh, unless you are planning the content in such a reason. This is not usually recommended anyways. And once uh, that that is done, once all of this uh, settings has been set, then you can move on, on to publishing. And that is how you can work around with publishing settings inside of Adobe Captivate. So hope you guys learn something as always. And as always, please like, comment, share, and subscribe.